last types of transport and then we'll just put some examples into the human body you've learned these before as well i just want you to have um, some phys examples of them so um, vesicular transport um, first let's define a vesicle a vesicle is a little plasma membrane bound bubble okay um, inside of cells and if you cannot get something to be transported by any of the cheaper, faster ways that we talked about. So let's go through those really quickly. So the very cheapest, fastest way that you could transport anything across the cell membrane would be simple diffusion, but it would have to be lipid soluble or super tiny to do that. The next cheapest, fastest way is through a channel, right? It's going to slow it down a little bit because there are fewer places that it can diffuse, but it still doesn't cost anything. So that would be a diffusion through a channel. Um, the next way would be um, diffusion through a carrier. It's still going to be cheap, free, but you're going to have to wait until it binds and changes the conformation so it's going to slow it down. Okay, And that would be facilitated diffusion or uh, diffusion through a carrier. Um, then next after that, let's see if you guys can think which one would be um, cheaper, faster, or cheaper or faster. Primary active transport or secondary active transport? Which one goes right after facilitated diffusion? So if I were trying to get something to go against its concentration gradient, I could either pump it directly, primary active transport, or I could hitchhike, um, secondary active transport. So let's use the example that we talked about last time. If I were trying to get glucose to go against its concentration gradient, I could pump it directly using, let's say, one ATP per glucose molecule, and then it would cost me three ATPs to move three glucose molecules. That would be primary active transport. Or I could use secondary active transport, which would be writing the coattails of sodium inside the cell, right? And then you could get um, one, two, three glucoses in before you had to pump one, two, three sodiums out. And so secondary active transport, I hope you can see, would be a little cheaper. So secondary is cheaper than primary. And then the most expensive type of transport that you wouldn't do if you could accomplish it via any of the other mechanisms I just talked about would be what we call vesicular transport. That is moving something in or out of the cell membrane with a vesicle, a membrane-bound bubble. Now, it's not showing you in any of these pictures how much ATP it costs, but it's very energetically expensive. It's also not very fast. So these include endo and exocytosis. So let's talk about endocytosis first. These are all different types of endocytosis. They're all really expensive and they're pretty slow, and then one's the slowest of the three of them. So um, if you are doing breaking, being, bringing in big whole things like a white blood cell um, enveloping an E. coli, um, then you call it phagocytosis or phagocytosis, phagocytosis, and that means cell eating, okay? So what it's going to do is I want you to imagine that my head is an E. coli. No, it should be a caucus because it's rounder. Okay, and then my, my um, shoulders and arms are my cell membrane. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my cell membrane around until I have a bubble of cell membrane, and then I am going to bring that in like this, okay? And then if it were an E. coli or some kind of pathogen, I would fuse it with a lysosome and whoop up on it. Okay, so that's phagocytosis. It's um, really energetically expensive and kind of slow. This is how you get rid of old red blood cells. This is how macrophages often work. Um, okay. And then pino or pinocytosis is when you do the same thing, but instead of taking in a solid, you take in a bubble of extracellular fluid that has something that something in it. Okay, so this is pino or pinocytosis, and that is fluid endocytosis. It's taking in fluids and cells, but about the same price, about the same um, speed as um, phagocytosis. And then um, the slowest one. Hopefully, you can see why would be um, receptor-mediated endocytosis, because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to bring in something really specific that won't move by any of those other mechanisms. And so what I have to do is I have to wait for it to bind to all of these receptors, 
and then when it's bound to a bunch of receptors, not just one, because um, that it's really expensive to do this. So you're wanna, gonna wanna wait until you've got a few of them. And then once you do that, that is the trigger for endocytosis. So it's receptor mediated endocytosis. Very specific, this is how, for instance, you bring LDL, the low density lipoprotein, that cholesterol that we always think of as bad, but you actually need some of it inside the cell. This is also how some forms of iron are brought inside the cell. Okay, so can you see why this receptor mediated endocytosis would be slower than either of these? Because you need to wait until the whatever you're transporting, LDL or whatever, is bound to receptors before you initiate endocytosis. So these are all energetically expensive and they are all really slow, but the slowest is receptor-mediated endocytosis. Um, okay, now, um, what about exocytosis? Um, exocytosis is when I made something inside the cell that's too big to get out of the cell by any other mechanism. Like on, if you were going to, on your rough ER, make a protein that is meant for secretion, like let's say you've got a pancreatic beta cell that's making insulin. So what you're going to do with it is the protein's gonna to be too big to be transported via a channel or a carrier or simple diffusion. You can't do it that way because um, it's sometimes even bigger than the transport proteins themselves. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna package it up in the Golgi apparatus. Remember, Golgi does packaging. And so what I'm gonna end up with is a bubble of whatever this protein is or su substance that I wanna transport. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that bubble, um, it's a vesicle, and I'm gonna push the vesicle up against the cell membrane. And because of the fluid mosaic nature of the cell membrane, when it gets pushed up against the cell membrane, it's going to join with the cell membrane. You're not even gonna lose any of these phospholipids. And so it's going to join and then you're gonna end up dumping the contents, yeah, without even losing any phospholipids. But again, energetically expensive and really slow. But this is a common transport mechanism for getting proteins out of cells. And I think we can agree that insulin doesn't do you any good if it doesn't leave the beta cells of the pancreas. Okay, so let me show you an animation that does all of that as well. Okay, just like two minutes long. The substances used as fuel by single-celled organisms include other smaller cells, particles of organic material, and large molecules that cannot pass through the plasma membrane. Many single-celled eukaryotes use a mechanism called endocytosis to ingest such food particles. In this process, the plasma membrane surrounds and engulfs the food particle. Cells use three basic types of endocytosis depending on the size and nature of the material to be ingested. Phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. If the material the cell takes in is particulate, such as a bacterial cell or an organic fragment, the process is called phagocytosis. If the material is a liquid, it is called pinocytosis. Some types of molecules, such as low-density lipoproteins, LDLs, are transported across the plasma membrane by receptor-mediated endocytosis. These molecules first bind to specific receptors embedded in the plasma membrane. The receptor molecules are concentrated in an indented pit coated by the protein clathrin. When sufficient target molecules accumulate in the coated pit, the pit deepens, seals, and is incorporated into the cell as a coated vesicle. Exocytosis is the reverse of endocytosis. This process results in the discharge of materials from membrane-bound packages that migrate to the inner surface of the plasma membrane, fuse with the membrane, and then release their contents to the outside of the cell. Okay, so that is endo and exocytosis. Both um, of those are called vesicular transport and they are plan Z when you're doing cell transport because they're slow and energetically expensive.